May I ask those who are leaving the public gallery to do so quietly, please? And the next item of business is members' business debate on motion 6006 in the name of Tavish Scott on Ireland Games Support Scotland's Athletes. The debate will be concluded without any questions being put. And may I ask those members who wish to participate to press the request to speak buttons now. I call on Tavish Scott to open the debate around seven minutes, please, Mr Scott. Thank you very much, presiding officer. There is nothing quite like a relay race. The 4x100 women's final at the NatWest Games in Jersey was breathtaking. As the baton reached Shetland's Sophie Moore, the team was fighting for a medal. Sophie turned on the afterburners, screamed down the home straight and brought that gold home for Team Shetland. And the convener of Shetland Islands Council and I lost our voices during the last 11 seconds of that particular race. Uh, Shetland went home from Jersey two years ago with 23 medals, our second best haul at an Island Games. These are an athletic and sporting occasion that brings 4,000 athletes together from 24 islands as far apart as the Falklands and Faroe. This Saturday, the next biannual Games begins in the beautiful surroundings of Gotland. It is my honour to support Shetland at those, just as Liam MacArthur will do the same for Orkney. Uh, and yes, it is a bit like Everton versus Liverpool or Cali versus Ross County. As long as we beat Orkney, everything else is a bonus. Uh, sporting rivalry, uh, to say nothing of the Western Isles, um, sporting rivalry is in the best traditions of personal and team commitment, dedication and belief. That is the Island Games, the camaraderie of athletes from across the globe brought together for a week. Shetland is sending 130 ambassadors to Gotland covering 11 sports. 37 are in full-time education and 23 are under 18. They are sportsmen and sportswomen, but they are so much more than that. They are representing their islands. The islands game have become so much more than just sport from that first gathering in the Isle of Man in 1985. Two years ago in Jersey, I met political colleagues from islands across the world, from self-governing legislatures, crown dependencies and sub-states of national states. The Jersey First Minister described his relationship with Whitehall to me. And at that same meeting, the Council's convener from Shetland noted the similarities and differences with Lerwick's relationship to St Andrew's House. So just one minor political observation. There are no responsibilities that places like the Isle of Man have that we in Shetland could not undertake. Taking our own decisions is not just about Edinburgh. Shetland hosted the Games in 2005. And just as with Glasgow 2014, the home team excelled. 46 medals, and we won the football. Half the population of the islands was at the Gilbertson Park back then. The other half claimed to be. The full match is a video in every Shetland home. The winning players are recognised in, in local supermarkets as much as Scotland's 1967 Wembley team are. Shetland 2005 brought £7 million into the island's economy. It created a sense of belonging, of community spirit, of identity and pride for local people. 700 islanders volunteered. The media coverage was positive. There was, to put it mildly, a vast social programme. Money was, of course, spent on sporting infrastructure. Hosting such games grows sport. That is real legacy. Competing at successive island games leads to greater numbers of young people at local club training sessions. Success means greater participation, not just in top-level sport, but in recreational sport and in healthier, active lifestyles. In Shetland, we built a sports development programme on coaching with technical officials and training for volunteers. Is that not what legacy should be all about? Uh, Emma Leesk was 12 in 2005. She was inspired by the athletics at the Clickerman track. She told her mum, Janice, that she would run for Shetland. She has and is now a multiple gold medal winner at successive games. We now have ladies football. Gymnastics has grown enormously, now a 200-member club and growing. Linda Flaws was part of Team Scotland in Glasgow 2014 at table tennis. Linda's success grew out of hosting the Island Games. Volleyball, a great sport for Shetland given our weather, is a massive success story. Local leagues now mean a Shetland team competing in the Scottish National Leagues. There are more examples. Shetland should and I'm sure will host the Games again. So I have one request today for ministers. Uh, I want to thank the sports minister for what she's done to make, try and make an Islands Athletes Travel Fund happen. I want to thank her and indeed Stuart Harris, the Chief Executive of Sports Scotland. 
But we need to turn those supportive words into a practical scheme that would allow the best of Ireland athletes to be part of Scotland-wide development squads across many sporting disciplines. You it is a scheme long overdue. Liam MacArthur. I'm very grateful to my fellow Liverpool supporting uh, colleague Tavish Scott for giving way and, and certainly echo the points he's made about the travel fund. Um, as you'll be aware, Orkney uh, has already intimated its determination to bid for the Games in 2023 and I declare an interest as somebody who's helping uh, with those efforts. Can I put on record um, the, the uh, gratitude of the bid committee uh, to Event Scotland and Sports Scotland uh, for their engagement to date? But from the experience of Shetland in 2005, could Tavish Scott perhaps comment on the importance of direct Scottish Government engagement and support in that process. I think, I think that's a fair point for any of our islands who, who, who want to who embark on hosting the Games. Uh, the support we got in 2005 was important both from Sports Scotland, from government agencies and indeed from central government as well. Indeed, the then First Minister Jack McConnell came and opened the Games at that, uh, uh, I have to confess, on a briskly wet day in, in uh, July at that time. But nevertheless, um, it, uh, that central government support is essential, and I'm sure the, uh, uh, the Islands Minister absolutely takes that point about the role that uh, government can play in the future in the context uh, of Orkney. Uh, Gotland is costing uh, every local athlete from Shetland £1,200 each. Sponsorship from Malakoff Limited and others help with 10% of the overall transport and accommodation burden. But as with travelling to the Scottish mainland from Shetland, the financial and time commitment is huge, hence the need for that travel scheme, and I ask the government to look upon that. Let me finish with two sporting uh, moments. Uh, Andrea Strachan swam for Scotland in the 100 metres breaststroke at the Commonwealth Games. A year later, she won four golds in Jersey. I saw her swim the 100 metres final in Glasgow as I supported Team Scotland, and in Jersey when she won medal after medal. Nothing makes me prouder than to see Shetlanders compete and win. Uh, including, I have to say, my daughter playing inter-county hockey against Orkney or when my son scored the, uh, the crucial goal when we beat Orkney 4-1 on the football park. Again, my apologies, Liam MacArthur, for those my slight observations. Uh, so this weekend, I will do my bit, not just in supporting Team Shetland, not just meeting political friends from across the islands around the world, but carrying Grant Wiseman's golf bag as he competes for our golf team in this year's NetWest Island Games. Truly the mini Olympics. I personally cannot wait. Thank you. I call Miles Briggs to be followed by Marie Todd. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd like to start by congratulating Tavish Scott on securing today's uh, members' debate. I was going to highlight the fact with the election of Jamie Halker Johnson, there are now two Orcadians in this chamber, so he is kind of outnumbered on that, but I'll put that to one side. As Tavish Scott has set out, the biennial um, NatWest Island Games are an important event in the international sporting calendar and have gone from strength to strength since they began in the 1980s. I'm delighted that many athletes from Shetland and other island communities in Scotland will be joining others from 21 further island groups in the Games, which begin on the 24th of June. And I join with other, other MSPs across the chamber in, winning, in wishing these teams and every competitor every success in the Games. I also commend the event sponsors, which are an important side of actually having the Games in the first place, including NatWest, for the generous financial support which allows the Games to actually take place. Tavish Scott is entirely right to raise the specific challenges faced by island-based athletes in terms of the additional travel costs they face for training and competition. These are significant and, and real potential barriers to actually competing. And it's right that the Scottish Government agencies look at what more can be done to support these athletes and allow them to compete on a level playing field without being disadvantaged due to where they or their families live. The Health and Sport Committee heard directly from a number of people over the last year who live in the Highlands and Islands, including some of our members here who have been in that situation. And the travel challenges um, which they face to take their children and budding athletes um, around uh, Scotland, be it for training or competitions, as well as access in sports therapists and career development opportunities. And I hope in closing, the Minister um, today will actually outline uh, some of the work which Scottish Government is undertaking to examine whether or not it can take forward an island transport fund for athletes, an issue which I know that Tavish Scott's been pursuing for some years now, and which could make a real difference to many athletes across Scotland. Most, in, most people are aware of the huge physical health benefits that athletics and sport um, bring, but I believe it's also important to also highlight um, the improvement in mental health, which can also be achieved in sport. 
Um, I'm very clear um, that participation in team sports and activities can help play a huge part in maintaining good mental health. In addition, encouraging our young people to take part in team sports can help them develop the skills um, which build resilience in later life and life circumstances um, which may actually put them at risk of mental ill health. With social isolation as well, which is such a strong driver of mental health problems, a particular concern to many rural and island communities, supporting athletes from these areas and allowing them to meet other athletes at competitions and excel at what they do is also especially important. Events like the Island Games play an important role in bringing athletes together, developing friendships and connections, and giving athletes a tangible goal to aim towards. To conclude, Deputy Presiding Officer, I again welcome today's debate and wish all those taking part in the Games an enjoyable and, I hope, successful time. I hope by the time of the next Games in Gibraltar in the summer of 2019, we'll be able to make more progress in terms of how we support island-based athletes and ensure that there's just, they are just as able to take part in international competitions as those based in our Scottish cities and on the mainland. Thank you. I call Marie Todd to be followed by Maurice Corey. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Tavish Scott for bringing this motion forward for debate. Every two years, athletes from across the globe come together to compete in the Nat West Island Games. This year, in fact, starting this weekend, the Island Games are taking place in Gotland, in Sweden. As the motion mentions, there will be 21 island groups competing, including athletes from the Western Isles, Orkney and Shetland in my region, and I wish them all the very best of luck. The exceptional standard of competition in the Island Games is a testament that small communities can achieve great things. From friends in the Western Isles who have participated for many years, I have some idea of the level of training and the logistical effort required to compete. I agree that there are distinct challenges that face our island communities, but our islands consistently rise above these challenges in order to punch above their weight. Arguably, the most successful island in the Games, I don't want to enter too much of the competition going on, the most successful island in the Games is the tiny Sark, which is clearly not in my region. And it has a population of just 600 people and up until now has won 20 medals. That is one medal for every 30 people on the island. That is something every remote and rural community can admire. Thanks to these games, island athletes no longer have to head to the mainland to compete at an international level. Instead, they have the chance to represent their own community and raise the profile of their island. One of my staff members from Orkney competed in the games in Guernsey in 1987. He told me that there are great social and cultural events as well as sporting competitions. Loads of friendships are made as islanders from different countries meet up, and many of the sportsmen and women from other islands are of Commonwealth or even Olympic standard, so it's highly competitive. The International Island Games Association has always encouraged its member islands to not only take part in the Games, but to consider becoming a host island. So I'm delighted that Orkney's bidding to host the Games in 2023. The legacy that follows the, such a decision very often creates a stronger local sporting society than ever before. Shetland, Guernsey and the Island Man are all good examples of how the Games developed sport both within the islands and beyond. I want to address the issue of cost for, of travel for our athletes that's mentioned in the motion. Northlink does give good sponsorship deals to many sporting groups in Orkney and Shetland, helping them to reduce the cost of travel to the Scottish mainland. As well as Shetland, I also represent Orkney and the Western Isles. And constituents from the Western Isles and Orkney are at pains to point out that the cost of travel is also expensive for them. The Western Isles clearly have already benefited from RET, and we, the SNP, made a clear commitment in our 2016 manifesto to take action to reduce ferry fares on services to Orkney and Shetland as well. And I know that work on that is well underway. Of course, I'm delighted to see ferry fares to the Northern Isles frozen for the second year, but we need to ensure that we deliver on this manifesto pro promise. And I can assure my constituents that I am first in line to hold the government to account on this. This fare reduction will benefit, benefit everyone, not just the athletes travelling from the islands, but it'll make it easier for specialist coaches and physios to reach the islands for tra training purposes. I want to finish by highlighting that the islands have had some fantastic sporting successes. 
and are home to some dedicated staff. The Island Games showcase the very best of our island's will and determination to train hard, defy the odds and reach for gold. The last of the open debate speeches is Maurice Corey. <coughs> Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'd like to send my thanks to Tavish Scott for securing this debate today and bringing the attention to the issue of the issue of the financial difficulties faced by athletes when attending, uh, to, attempting to compete in their chosen field. I would also join Tavis Scott in recognising the efforts of all our athletes, all the athletes from Shetland, Orkney and the Western Isles who are going to the Island Games in Gotland, and I wish them all the very best of success. It is an appropriate week to be discussing sport in Scotland after the past week's sporting successes with Scotland's senior uh, men's rugby team beating Australia down under with the under-20 side following suit a few days later. Also, the men's cricket team beat Zimbabwe in an ODI and the first, team, uh, the first time a team for Scotland has beaten a full test nation in an official ODI. The Island Games themselves has existed since 1985 with the Isle of Man hosting the first games and subsequently taking place every two years in different locations throughout Europe. Shetland even hosted the games in 2005 and has been regularly in the medal tables along with Orkney and the Western Isles. However, as Tavish Scott quite rightly noted in his motion, higher costs are a regular issue facing athletes from Shetland and the islands. To preserve the sporting success from, that Scotland has enjoyed over the years, action is urgently required to combat this issue to prevent the possibility of athletes being unable to compete in events and, being, and even to the extent of being cancelled due to cost. The Shetland Times estimated that the total cost for athletes from Shetland to participate in the 2017 Island Games was over £1,000 per person, well beyond that that uh, what uh, athletes can afford. We have already seen numerous athletes from Shetland withdrawing from the Games due to this exorbitant cost, with the men's half-marathon team pulling out entirely. However, there are not, these are not isolated incidents with expenses for athletes in all rural and remote areas in Scotland being higher and acting as a barrier to participation for those in rural areas. This consequently limits opportunities to benefit uh, from the significant health and social advantages that taking part in sport can provide. These financial issues are, however, not just confined to the islands of Scotland. In the region of West Scotland, which I represent, there is great financial hardship on those attempting to host traditional Highland Games. Indeed, there are examples I know in my region of organised themselves being forced to put their own money into the Games to allow them to go ahead. For example, the chairman of Roseneath Highland Games, Robert McIntyre, put in £3,000 personally last year to allow the 2016 Games to take place. Such a scenario has been repeated across Scotland many times and is destined to continue until funding by the Scottish Government is put in place to ensure the survival of Highland Games and the continued participation of Scotland team, Scottish teams in competitions across the globe. In conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I'd like to thank Tavish Scott again for securing this debate and for the opportunity to shine a light on the financial difficulties of athletes attempting to compete. I wish all the athletes competing in the Island Games the very best of luck and look forward to hearing about their inevitable successes. Thank you. I now call Hamza Yousaf to respond to this debate. Around seven minutes, please, Minister. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'd like to, of course, congratulate Tavish Scott for bringing this debate uh, to the Parliament, uh, the excellent contributions made uh, right uh, across the Chamber. Uh, I thought I knew my sporting uh, rivalry as well as a Celtic man, uh, Celtic versus Rangers. Uh, of course, last weekend I was cheering on Pakistan in the cricket versus India, but nothing, nothing, presiding officer, clearly compares to the ri sporting rivalry uh, between uh, Orkney uh, and Shetland. So uh, disparaging was uh, Tabish Scott uh, to his colleague. It seems to have left uh, the parliamentary chamber uh, in disgust. But I am uh, very happy to support the mo motion's positive comments about the many benefits of, of Ireland's Games and extend my very best wishes, as others have done, to all Scottish athletes who will be participating in Gotland between 20, the 24th of uh, June and the 30th of June. In terms of support from Sports Scotland, the National Agency for Sport, I understand there may be as many as six current or, or previously supported Sports Scotland Institute athletes competing uh, at the Games, uh, up to, and up to 25 current or previously supported performance development programme athletes uh, as well. Uh, the motion rightly, of course, refers to the important issue of travel costs, and I'll spend some time uh, talking about that, uh, if I may. Uh, the points that have been made across the chamber by every single speaker here focuses on uh, the expense, the cost, uh, that, for example, athletes from the mainland having to compete in international competitions 
uh, would not have to face to the same degree, uh, and I would like to uh, recognise that uh, from a government uh, perspective. I am aware that there have been many discussions over a period of time between Sports Scotland, COSLA uh, and the Scottish Government on the issue of support for athletes with the travel costs uh, that they have. Of course, I know that Tavish Scott has shown an interest in this uh, for many years uh, and indeed in 2015 had a meeting uh, I raised this issue, I should say, uh, with Jamie Hepburn, who was then the Minister for Sport and Health Improvement and Mental Health. Uh, a survey undertaken by Sports Scotland prior to that uh, meeting did indicate that, encouraging, encouragingly, 28 out of the 32 local authorities provided some level of assistance to athletes. Uh, I believe it's very important that councils, including Shetland Island Council, continue to do what they can. Notwithstanding that, uh, I understand the calls for a scheme and, and, and Tavish Scott, Maurice Corey, uh, Marie Todd, uh, all imploring uh, the government uh, and of course Miles Briggs imploring the government uh, to come forward with some sort of scheme. So perhaps I can give a little bit uh, of detail on the discussions that have been taking place. Uh, over the last two years, uh, Sports Scotland have been having conversations with COSLA and the three Holy Island uh, authorities, of course, uh, including Shetland. Um, these, these discussions resulted in agreement at the Highlands and Islands Regional Sporting Partnership meeting in August 2016 of a programme which builds on Sports Scotland's current provision to the islands through its local performance development programme and the Sports Scotland Institute of Sport Network. Uh, but in particular, I can confirm that Sports Scotland has been discussing with the relevant local authorities the development of a programme targeted at supporting travel costs for identified performance or performance development athletes from the Highlands and Islands to assist with travel costs for an agreed training and competition schedule. Um, once the scheme is finalised, and I can tell members that uh, finance has been, uh, from Sports Scotland side of things, finance has been identified for this, it will contribute to performance targets as identified by the local authorities within their respective sports strategies. That is something that I think will be welcomed. I'm sorry at this stage I don't have the full detail of that, but once I do have the detail of that, uh, perhaps the Sports Minister, uh, Aileen Campbell, will um, furnish the members who are interested with the full details. So we will keep you updated, but it's very welcome that there, there is a development of a scheme. Uh, the money, uh, of course, is being discussed, negotiated, uh, and once we have all the I's dotted uh, and the T's crossed, uh, we will make sure that members are fully informed uh, of that. In terms of uh, the various schemes that, that, that already exist, uh, it should be said that support uh, for, uh, to Thailand communities uh, for, for, through travel, uh, for travel does exist. Uh, Marie Todd did mention uh, the road equivalent tariff uh, on the West Coast, uh, and she did rightly uh, mention our manifesto commitment to reduce ferry fares to the Northern Isles. And like she said in her contribution, work uh, on that is well underway. And again, if any member uh, wants a, a briefing on where that is uh, and the likely steps forward, <coughs> I would of course be happy. Uh, to provide that uh, to members after the debate and sometime uh, in the future. It's also worth highlighting what Marie Todd said about um, uh, Circle Northlink uh, and the sponsorship scheme that they already provide, not just for sports groups, but for the many good charitable organisations. And I think Tavish Scott, uh, who's here, would recognise that. I know he has a good relationship uh, with Stuart Garrett uh, and the team at uh, Northlink Ferries. Uh, they provided uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds, in fact, actually, when you total some of the sponsorship that they provided, uh, and I would encourage them to continue uh, to do that. Uh, I should also say that um, uh, he, Tavis Scott will be aware, of course, that I wrote to him uh, setting out how Northern Isles teams for the Island Games could benefit from the air discount scheme uh, if they'd managed their travel uh, slightly differently. For example, in the Western Isles, uh, the Western Isles team contacted Transport Scotland. Uh, we gave them advice on how they could uh, avoid, for example, uh, airport uh, APD, uh, but also benefit from the a a a uh, ADS, the discount scheme uh, that we have uh, as well. As far as I'm aware, there wasn't an approach um, to Transport Scotland from Shetland Isles uh, team, but if there is in the future, We'd be more than happy to work with them to assist them on how they can arrange their travel differently to see whether or not that would save uh, athletes uh, in the future. But uh, I, of course, in conclusion, presiding officer, would like to extend once again my very best wishes to athletes in uh, the, the Highlands and uh, indeed uh, islands uh, right across Scotland, including those uh, that are just about to compete in the Games. I hope uh, Tavish Scott and others are encouraged 
by the initiatives that I have mentioned, but I do realise uh, that they need some uh, firmer details. So once those details are available, uh, as I say, I will ensure that either myself uh, or indeed the Sports Minister furnishes them. Uh, and we're all looking forward to hopefully uh, soon celebrating the success of our island communities, representing their islands, of course, but perhaps in the wider context, also representing uh, this country uh, at Gotland. And uh, I wish them all the success in the world. That concludes the debate and I suspend this meeting until half past two this afternoon.